Distel is a producer and marketer of wines, spirits, and flavored alcoholic beverages. Mm -hmm. The market cap here, 31.2 billion rand, a PE ratio of 18.9, and a dividend yield, 2.7%. Do you want to kick off with Distel? You've yeah, been waiting to have this conversation. Yeah, it's formed from the merger <laughs> in uh, the year 2000 of Stellenbosch Farmers Wineries, which was started by some American back in 1925, and of Distillers Corp, which was formed by Anton Rupert, father of Johann Rupert in 1945. So they put the two together, but it's always suffered again from too many controlling shareholders. But I mean the brands, okay, the brands we know. The brands are Klipdrif and all the other local things. And, and Amarula those alcoholic and beverages doing well, we wines. always note that in the conversation. The pre you know, the flavored, mixed, the yes. flavored alcoholic beverages. Hunters, the kids drink, and Vorta, which is like some kind of vodka thing. <laughs> and then what's the other one called that I'm trying to remember? I Savannah. Oh, Savannah. Savannah is all also the in the Teenagers table. quaffing Savannahs <laughs> like there, it's no there tomorrow. There we go. Distel, and of course, this is the, the local uh, place. So have you been involved in the share Dry the shareholding? Savannah. So certainly, I think, obviously, if you look in terms of the REM grow, which is really controlling mm -hmm. there, and they are stationed right in the farm, uh, wine farm lanes. Um, and certainly there's that growth. Obviously, the demand we've been talking away from uh, pure beer into, uh, beer into, into, into the spirits. Uh, and uh, one of the key issues, that, I mean, the doctors say, which really helps in saying that, you know, a little wine does not, uh, um, you know, harm you after every meal. Um, I, I think the valuations just look a little is bit Is that it? A little wine after every meal? I thought it was a glass a day you could get away with. No, after every but meal. But I like your doctor. That's what I had. <laughs> <laughs> Attractive valuations certainly uh, for mm. distill. They haven't done well from a, a share performance perspective uh, recently, and also their earnings uh, were slightly down, just under as one percent mm. uh, in their last reporting. Not immune to uh, the weak trends in consumer demand, of course, uh, but fairly resilient. Globalizing, we've uh, not mentioned that yet, but they bought a couple of years ago a Scottish uh, whiskey blender and distiller called Bunnarvon. Bunnabain, Bunnarvon, it's called, but it's uh, written. Don't worry, we'll go the way with, you with write it and the way you s say it is totally different. We'll just work with what you put on the table And then recently buying a group called Best, which has got Best Whiskey and Best Cream, which is apparently very popular brands in Angola, Nigeria and Kenya as well. So that also shows some interesting intent. Is there opportunity? Let's put that share price graph back up on the screen. Is there opportunity at, at current levels? Well, let's just talk about the deal to reorganize their shareholder base. So as Joseph mentioned, the two big shareholders were always Remgro, which owns about 53% of the business, through Cape Vin and a whole com com complicated structure. Then there was SAB Miller. But when AB and Bev bought SAB Miller, they were forced to sell it. So they sold it to the PIC. So now the PIC has got like 25%. Now they're going to collapse these various control structures in the following uh, months in order to liberate the f minorities so that the minorities in this entity will end up owning about 20% of the shares. Thank and you. then it'll be a bit more liquid. That's Thank the idea. Thank you for explaining. <laughs> Sorry, that, that took a while. Uh, no, it was good. We needed to, to go through the to mechanics. Go around the exactly, yeah. exactly. Because there were minorities at the higher end structures, and they said, you know what, guys, this is not helping. Let's just put all of our interest into the single one, one listed pot, new yeah. distill at the bottom. So now we understand. Are we going to call this? Is there anything else to add, Joseph, before we give it a hot or not? An in, in interesting snippet that you uh, could leave no, us with? No, really. Uh, apart from, obviously, as we say, you know, your, your wines and uh, spirits are getting into, into demand. There's almost inelastic there. Um, the PE, you can't really compare, obviously, with the offshore uh, listings we talked about, apart from uh, mm -hmm. AB InBev. Um, does not look demanding compared to the others. So it becomes tough to say, is it hot or not hot? But I think I'll miss it. The only what? other. Oh, you're uh, going to say you, you not, hot, not yeah. hot, not hot. Okay, you confused me there. Remember, the only other thing we always joke about when we talk about this company is that the CEO, Richard Rushton, was at Pretoria Boys High, which is where I always yes. went to school. And he's a good friend of yours. No, he's a little bit older than me. He was a uh, prefect when I arrived. Ah, you would have wanted to be good <laughs> friends with him. <laughs> yeah, that exactly. hero worship type yeah, I was like the little guy in his little <coughs> so you see shorts. Now, is that why you're going to have to call this one hot? <laughs> no, but he is apparently one of South Africa's best CEOs. 
And remember, the chair of the board is Yanni Durant. So Rem Grow take very close care of this business. I and still, they're going to continue I still detect to a little hero worship. If he's one of <laughs> South Africa's oh, he, best He was CEOs. a prefect. He was, you know, yeah, ahead of him. Was, so, was he so, so, so certainly, I think it's automatic. Uh, you know, automatic. Would respect, you would respect the prefect. But you gave it a miss. Could you change your view now because of Richard Rushton? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you tried. And you're going to give him a heart. I well, think so, yes. I think the liberation of the minorities issue is going to be helpful because one of the key problems has always been that the share doesn't trade properly. You can't you get this big gap between buyers and sellers. I think that's going to help. We've got and I think, you know, Remgro's continued support is now going to be at the appropriate level and that's all good. And now they're going to go global. And the consumer economy, remember, will recover in this don't country. Don't worry, you don't need to convince us mm. anymore. We know, and I hope you bump into Richard Rushton <laughs> soon. I haven't seen him and he thanks since you for the 1986 <laughs> well, or something. I'm sure he's going to give you a call. <laughs> 1986. Now. So, to Stella's hot from Paul's perspective. Yeah.